All righty. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to our human performance webinars. I am your host, James Grigson. And today we're, we have a very special guest. We're joined by one of our long standing clients, New South Wales Rugby League. And on behalf of New South Wales Rugby League, we have their digital integrations officer, Mitchell Fredericks. Mitchell, thanks for coming on, mate. Really appreciate it. No worries. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. And also joining us and, and returning to the program, Carolyn Sang, one of our sports science consultants. Thank you, Kaz. Awesome. I'm really excited to get this one going. So really, the theme of these human performance webinars has really been looking at best practices of athlete management systems. Uh, we always really like to look at some of our client showcases, and we have done that in the past as well. So today, we, we will be looking at a front office administration workflow within the SmarterBase environment, and we'll be looking at the New South Wales Rugby League's workflow. So uh, I won't steal too much of Mitch's thunder, but New South Wales Rugby League is a state body, state governing body for uh, rugby league and, and the tournament that exists, the domestic tournament that exists at the, the higher level uh, within the state. And then of course, obviously fostering new talent from um, you know, the ages of, of six, essentially all the way up until until they're ready to, to graduate and uh, move on to, to senior football. So there's a lot of complexities, as you would imagine, in navigating that. Um, and particularly today, we're going to be looking at the navigation of their, their uh, major competition within their state, their senior competition, and also com compliance to do with those clubs within that state. So looking at how they're managing the salary cap for those clubs, looking at how managing certain drug tests, uh, club compliance, all within an athlete management system. And I just wanted to touch on that a little bit more. Uh, obviously, a lot of people really like to, to have, or a lot of people hope to have, as much information within the system as they possibly can. And this, the, the effort that New South Wales Rugby League has put into this, um, as well as the, the help from Carolyn, has really shone through here and is a really nice front-end workflow, which allows New South Wales Rugby League not to double handle so much and be in one place at all times. So I will, I will hand it over to Mitch. Mitch, all, all I'd love for you to do, my friend, is just to talk us through what we're looking at here. If you wouldn't mind giving me a brief overview of, I guess, if you want to call it the problem, so what you need to be able to, to achieve with a workflow like this, and then jump into the actual workflow itself and, and what we're seeing. So take it away, my friend. Sure, thanks for that. Um, so I guess we uh, at New South Wales Rugby League, we run uh, in terms of our major competitions, which are our um, semi-professional competitions all the way up to um, New South Wales Cup, which is basically reserve grade NRL in New South Wales. Um, we run upwards of 10 major competitions. Um, and I guess with a, with a relatively small major competitions um, administration team, um, we were finding it pretty hard to keep on top of all the different submissions uh, that the clubs had to make to us at multiple times throughout the year. So we, we try to run these competitions at um, a pretty high standard to, because it is reserve grade NRL all the way up to uh, and, and, and below that. And I guess we've put a lot of, um, a lot of different things in place to, to make sure that the standards of those competitions are up to scratch. And, and that means that there's going to be more submissions, more data, more information coming into us on a, on a weekly, monthly basis. Um, and we needed a way to be able to, not only for ourselves to be able to, um, I guess, understand and capture that data and, and then know what we can do with it, but also, um, keep on top of when clubs have sent something in and know that that submission has been made, tick off um, that, that they're on top of everything. And uh, when it used to just be email trails and um, submissions to, to us via, via email to different staff members, it, it was messy. Um, and it was, look, it was manageable to a point. And, but once we've grown to the point that we have and have the amount of competitions that we look after uh, and the size of the team that we do, uh, it just got it got too much for the the small crew we have. So I guess um, that's where SmarterBase came in to um, help us out, and we decided that we needed some sort of some sort of system that was able to um, enable us to keep on top of everything on a day to day basis and have that not just when we 
you know, when we need to, to run a report, but have it live on the front end on a dashboard so that we can log in at any time and go, okay, we know what every club in that competition has submitted to us up to date and we know who we need to chase up. Um, and, and I think even better than that, Smarter Base has enabled us to do the chasing up for us. So, you know, we, we get emails when stuff's been submitted through the system. Clubs get emails saying that stuff's been submitted, approved. Um, it saves us having to type that email. It's another thing in the workflow that has been able to be automated, um, saves time, and anything to save time is a win in our book. So, um, that's where Smarter Base has really been able to um, help us out in our, I guess, our front office administration. So, um, James, do you want me to start going into this um, contracts and salary cap workflow? Yeah, yeah, of course, mate. And just, just, um, just on that quickly, the the data sets that you're referring to, the ones that previously were coming in via email, and I'm sure people in your role or similar will will attest to the the flooding of emails and and how difficult it can be to keep track of all of that whether it be normally done in Excel or whatnot. What, what type of data sets are we talking about here? Just to paint a picture on, just for those that maybe might be a little bit unaware of what type of data sets you are looking to ingest and, and house in this environment, talk us through just little bits of, of that if you can. Sure, so one thing that we, um, that we require is for anyone that plays in our major and pathways competitions, we require a contract for that player. Um, so when you have upwards of sort of X amount of thousand players that need a contract every year, we need to be able to keep a tab on that, um, not just when the contract's been received, when it's been approved, a value on that contract. And originally that was all being sent just to an email inbox. So we would get a PDF attachment to an email with a player contract in an inbox that um, at, at certain times of the year was being absolutely inundated because all our contracts were coming in between November and February before we'd kick off and we were reliant on staff member who had to then somehow manage to open up all those contracts, make sure they're signed properly, make sure they're um, dated correctly, all the, the figures are in there correctly, um, the competition names correct, everything like that because it is a legal document, they're being, players are being paid in these competitions. We had to make sure all that was correct. We then had to manually take that figure for the salary cap value across to an Excel spreadsheet, keep a big record of where that club is at in terms of their salary cap spend um, and try and track that manually throughout the year. And I guess when you have um, then things like contract terminations come in and then you've got to go back and you've got to edit that again because that number needs to come out of the cap, um, it, it gets difficult because it's just such a big submission. Um, Likewise, things like training schedules, we require all the clubs to let us know where and when they're going to be training. Um, and that's not a requirement just for us. That's a requirement for um, the ASADA drug testing as well. So um, in Australia, ASADA is the um, anti-doping regulator and, and we, um, we have a requirement to, to let them know where all our teams are training so that if they want to turn up and do any drug testing, then they know where to, to be. Um, it was a requirement for clubs to send all their training schedule information via email to us and to ASADA. And again, even ASADA were getting inundated with different emails at different times saying, yes, we're training here tonight. And then, oh no, we canceled that. We've moved it here. And it was, it was all very hard to keep track of. So again, the Smarter Base system has allowed us to collate the data um, in, in one place and it's allowed us to, to only send off the notifications to certain people that, that require it once it's in there and, and it's it's all in that one clean, easy to understand format that's never going to change. But previously, club to club, every submission would change because it was just how they typed the email. And you're right, it is in a beautiful format. So kudos to, to you guys for putting that together, making it look so pretty. And, and, and Kaz, I've, I've got you to smile there. So. Uh, Mitch, can you talk us through what we're looking at here? So it, it seems as if we are looking at the, the contract submission yes. form. Talk me through who would be interacting with this and, and how they would put in this information. Sure. So um, each club now, when they want to enter a contract for a player, uh, they have the, the paperwork document that they will sign with the player um, at the, the contract meeting that they might have, but then they will punch the data into... Um, into Smarterbase here. We have all the fields that are in our contract 
um, form. Basically, we just want to know some, some details around who the player is, um, their date of birth, the contract uh, start and expiry date, how many years that contract's valid for, um, and then some other questions around things like medical cover, is the club paying uh, for private health cover for the player, uh, or is, the, um, is the, the player needing to get that themselves? We need to look at what club there is uh, and, and what competition they're playing for. And then we have uh, this Schedule 1 information is um, basically the salary cap value. So we, uh, any payment information for that player gets put into this table. Uh, so we have a sign-on fee if there is any. Now, there's a lot of tabs in this table. Not every club or every player will use them all. Um, but for different competitions, different players will, will get different allowances and, and payments. So all of those certain things uh, calculate up till we get a total contract value. Um, we've got a couple of different things in there. We've got a team from Fiji in our competition and some teams, uh, New Zealand, the Warriors in our competitions. Uh, and I guess that means that we need some calculations around exchange rates and dollar values. Um, so all of that gets calculated up and we get uh, at the end of it an adjusted contract value with the correct Australian dollar amount. Um, so for this contract here, that's 6,400. And then we have some details around the medical cover. If the club ticked yes above, they just need to let us know what year they're providing that medical for and the value of that cover. And we, um, we come down to where they can actually upload that signed contract. So still an important part of the whole process is our staff actually physically looking at that contract, making sure it's all signed correctly. Um, no issues there if it wasn't needing to be used as a legal document. Um, we, we get the, the club to upload that contract. Uh, and once they've done that, um, for, the, for the main part, that, that's then complete for the club. We then got two options underneath that come into play a little bit later. If the club wants to vary that contract, so let's say the player um, throughout the season gets some sort of pay rise or a bonus, and that contract has changed. We have a contract variation form. They can tick yes to that box uh, and come in and upload that document that varies the contract. Or should that player be terminated from the contract at any time during the contract dates, um, we have the contract termination upload so they can come in and upload that document. So again, we need to view those documents so it can't just be information put into the system. We actually have to upload or get the clubs to upload that that document. And then down the bottom, uh, we have a chart that is for office use. And this is where we uh, approve the contract. So in the contract status, uh, there's some options approved, declined and terminated. Um, so if we're all happy, we'd approve that contract if everything's signed correctly. Uh, and then registered to database. So before any of our players can take the field, they're required to um, register to our national registration database. And uh, this is another um, check box that we, we tick off. And that's just another really good way for us to make sure that every player that is taking the field is all registered, approved, ticked off. Um, and I, then the, the, the two of those fields there together um, calculate together to give us an overall status of approved. Or if it was no, then we'd get a pending. Or, and if the contract was declined, then we'd get a declined or a terminated status. Yes, it's just a thing there, trying to simplify uh, something that obviously, like you had said before, previously quite complex. If we, if, if we don't mind, we'll jump back to the, the dashboard and, and what we're looking at on that front page, uh, at least from what I can see, is, it, is an overview of a group or, or a club. Talk me through you and your role and how New South Wales Rugby League would come in and as a governing body and would look at all the clubs that we're seeing here or, or navigate this dashboard. Sure. So our competition uh, coordinators or competition staff will will, will utilise this on a, I guess, a daily basis. Really, they they will um, they'll come in. Uh, first of all, one of their main jobs is making sure that um, any contracts that are newly submitted to the system have been actioned. So in the top left hand um, blue box there, where you've got submitted contracts, um, ideally that number would be um, of a of of a day that would be as close to zero as possible. Um, and then when they log in the next day, there might've been 
20 new submitted contracts of an evening uh, that have come in. So straight away, they know that there's some contracts there they need to look at and action uh, and, and make sure that we've, we've ticked them off for the club's behalf. So um, we've got some nice, uh, easy to understand contract statuses up the top um, and the, the tabs that we just saw in the, the form um, go on to show in the database here where you've got the approved and registered column. Um, all of those, those different statuses then flow through to the dashboard so that we can see straight away uh, at any time the player name, what they're contracted for and, and what their status is. Um, and that, that's a big thing for us because there's no need to run any reports through Smarterbase anymore for basic things like this. It's all there on the front end. Uh, and, and best of all, we can search for a player um, through this, the filters at the top now um, just by typing their name. So it's been um, a big saver in time. Originally, we were, when we were using Smarterbase previously, um, the workflow had been we'd, we'd run a report every time we needed to to get this information out. But this new dashboard has enabled us to have that information there, uh, click of a button, um, and it's all nice and visual, uh, colour-coded, so we know the status of every contract. Um, down below that, we then flow into some just some visual graphs around contract statuses, um, a breakdown of of each contract in the system and the percentage of what status they all are. Uh, and again, that's that's for office use so that we know which competitions we need to look at a bit more to, to action those contracts. Uh, and below that, we then have the salary cap information. So this is, uh, this is very important that we keep a track of this and, and also equally important as for clubs to know where they're at with their salary cap. So clubs will um, as soon as they enter data into the system now, that gets um, populated into these charts uh, and the red dot in the chart shows us the salary cap um, limit and the, the bar coming up to that shows them how much more they have to spend. So, um, and the colours of those bars are based on the contract values that are in the system. So if a club submits a contract, um, the bar will still move up straight away as soon as that value goes in, um, but it'll be blue. And as soon as we approve it, it'll turn green. Uh, and then likewise, if they're pending, they'll be orange. So a club, even regardless of the status of the contract, if we're still waiting on some signatures or we're still waiting to action that contract, they can still see live where they will be if we were to go in and approve all of those contracts at any point in time. Uh, and and it, it just helps them keep track of things. The last thing we want is for them to have different records to what we think we have. And this helps us both be on the same page. So I guess that's um, that's pretty much this this dashboard and workflow. And as I said before, the, the biggest thing has, has been to eliminate us keeping a manual spreadsheet of this. Um, to have it all live data, not not need to double up on a workflow, um, it saved us a lot of time. So you were saying before that each club will have their own individual variation of this. So that will they see something very similar to this or any different? It, it's pretty much their own data that they would yeah. see in here. Yeah, they'll see very similar. They just um, they won't see this kind of view where in the club column you can see all the different clubs. Um, yeah. They'll only see their own data. Uh, likewise, down below, if they don't have a club in that, or if they don't have a team in that competition, they won't mm. see um, that competition salary cap spend. Um, so we, we personalise that for each club. We don't we don't share how much each club spent in their salary cap with other clubs. It's yep. it's uh, up to the club how much they spend in terms of um, as long as they're they're under and have spent a certain amount of the the cap. Um, that that's you know, there, there's some guidelines there for every club, but we don't share that information with each club. So it's personalised for each club, but um, it's very similar to what you're seeing here. Understood. And, and, and let's let's jump onto a couple of the other tabs here that you mentioned before. I'd, I'd love for you to take us through the, the workflows here on this training submission tab. Sure. So the um, training schedule submissions, as I mentioned before, it's a requirement for both New South Wales Rugby League and ASADA to receive these uh, on a monthly basis. So um, we need to know information around venue, time, 
who's going to be in attendance, what kind of training session it is, whether it's a gym session, a field session, uh, whether they're at the pool, during recovery, that kind of thing. Um, so we we use that uh, this form here to um, populate that information. The club will go in, pick the competition, the club, the year, and a month that they're submitting it for, and they'll enter the information in the chart here. Um, as I said, basic information around where, when, who, um, and that'll all get entered for each session. Uh, a lot of times for clubs, it's a pretty basic submission because they train on the same, at the same time on the same days, so they can use the fill down option and just change the dates. So if they're training it as we put in there, 4.15 every day, we can just fill down uh, that column and as like that so that we can uh, eliminate the need to type into every box uh, and then each time they just go in and amend the date for the start of the session. So that makes it easy for them. We, uh, I guess one of the things that we, we didn't want to do and we, we still are concerned about in some way, uh, and we're trying everything we can to eliminate it, is to make the club's workload as, I guess, as less as possible. Um, dependent on what grade these competitors or what grade the team is in, uh, sometimes they're not, they're, they're volunteer staff or they're, um, they're part-time staff, they're working in their own time. We don't want that to be a, you know, a laborious task that they have to spend a lot of time on. Um, so we, although we need this data, this data and information as a requirement for a number of reasons, we don't want to make that a, a big long task that they have to do um, all the time. So uh, another thing in this um, is a change of schedule. If they need to update any of this in the table, they can just tick yes there. Uh, and, and then to what they've changed. And as soon as they submit that, uh, ourselves and ASADA will get information uh, email saying what they've changed so that they don't turn up to the wrong venue or the wrong date or whatever the change might be. Ashley Mitch, that was going to be one of my other questions uh, while we jump back, just we'll jump back to the front page dashboard there, Kaz. So ASADA has a, a login to this or they receive a report. How are they going to get a, a report of this? Yeah, so they have, we set them up an account um, yeah. they, they don't, um, they don't log in so much, uh, anymore because of the, um, the performance alert emails that get sent straight to them. So they collate these emails and it's all there, uh, for them in each email that gets sent. So we just set them up an account under their, um, their, their inbox that, that takes all of these submissions and it all just flows through. Everything's in the same format for them. Uh, it's easy to understand, and uh, they've they've gotten they've gotten to know this this system and this workflow, which is great. Uh, and if they need anything, they do have the option to log in and, and look at that. That's great. And and Kaz, you're just showing there a change to a, to a session, right? Is that, yeah, is that with with I guess probably more around the number of rows that you would have in the report, but this is similar to the kind of PDF that they'd be sent when they get that performance alert. They being a SADA in this case. Yes, yes, SADA. Yeah. yeah, cool. All right, um, Mitch. We we are coming up a little bit on on the close of of the webinar time that we had. We do have a few more in here, so I'd love if you want to pick out a couple of favourites or you want to you want to skim over some. Feel free, but uh, I really want to make sure that we we get the most out of this. So uh, sure. jump jump wherever you want to go to, and, and and let's see some some of this really nice stuff. Yeah, well, this, this trial match sanctioning application dashboard has been a big one for us as well. Again, this used to all be paper submissions uh, and, and teams, we'd have to email individual clubs back to let them know that things have been approved, referees have been appointed, all that sort of stuff. So um, that dashboard there has has enabled us to um, to give every club a visual of, of where they're at and tick everything off from our end um, very easily again. Um, this form really quickly populate the details of, of the trial uh, in, in there. Uh, and if we scroll down, whether they um, need to, whether they need us to appoint the referees and the, the video recorder. Uh, and then we have an option there to appoint or to attach their team lists um, so that we know who took part in the match or they can populate it within SmarterBase by typing that in. So again, this was an email we get emails from clubs saying here's our trial team list either typed out in the email or attached as a word doc or again 
you know, that email goes to one staff member and the application goes to another and and then we have to piece the two together. Um, or, the, or the paper team list gets handed to our, our ground official on the day and then that gets emailed by them back to us. So this, again, brings everything into the one place um, and it all sits together. We can see where everything's at. And if we just go back to the dashboard, if we can, um, <clears throat> so the dashboard allows the club to... Uh, to see when their trial's been approved and know that they can, um, you know, proceed with, with that trial just by looking at this front, front end dashboard. So um, this has been a, another really good one for us. Uh, and down below, we can keep tabs on how many trials each club in each grade has had. So we give a certain amount of trials um, paid for in terms of us providing referees, uh, filming provider. We pay for that. That just keeps us... Um, it keeps tabs for us so that we know when we need to pass the invoice on to the club because it's over there allotted amount for that particular year. Um, so that's been really good for us as well. Uh, again, was a manual shit spreadsheet and um, has been automated for us nicely. So, uh, and the last one, just quickly, um, is our playing apparel and jersey design. So for branding and sponsor agree agreements, we need to... Um, we need to view these each season from every club. So they'll submit them to Smarterbase now and our commercial team have a login to the system. Uh, they make sure that all the sponsors are there correctly, the, the logo for the competition showing correctly, uh, our New South Wales Rugby League logo is visible somewhere uh, and they can tick that off and the club knows that then they can start production of, of those uh, playing apparel. And I guess... Um, this is another one that uh, we, we struggled with because we had um, we had the submissions or well, the, the attachments in emails coming into our pathway competition staff, and then we would have to forward those emails on to our commercial team. They'd take a look at it, they'd email us back. We'd then email the club to say yes, we're good to go. It's a long process, so this has allowed them to just have a login, come in, tick the yes button when they're happy that it's all been approved, um, and it, and it's basically cut us at all the, the pathways, major pathways, competition stuff, out of out of the loop for this because there's no there's no requirement for us and, and apart from making sure that the submission's been done, um, the staff at com the commercial level need to approve this. Mm. That's fantastic, mate, uh, and, and really appreciate your run through. Carolyn, before we, we get Mitch to, to round off, was there anything you wanted to add? Because I know you've had some experience with some other leagues as well doing something similar here. Is there anything of note that you really want to point out? Any sort of uh, tips and tricks that you, that you want to address? Um, I think um, even just coming from my experience as well, um, just when you're especially if you're a builder of SmarterBase or you're someone who's looking to implement it in your organisation, just thinking outside the box. Um, SmarterBase doesn't have to be used just for high performance or, um, I guess, athlete monitoring. Um, you can use it for so many other things. And this is a really, really, really cool example of trying to apply it in a different part of, I guess, the business. Um, and we've obviously seen a lot of our clients um, use SmarterBase in some really cool ways. Um, in terms of best practice, um, obviously, this is a slightly bit a bit of a redo for New South Wales Rugby League we've got some flash new dashboards that we put up for this workflow um, they did come from a templated dashboard but we're looking at some of our DBB dashboards now which um, I, I would say a lot more interactive Mitch if you would agree um, to allow yeah, the club definitely. yeah so from the club point of view um, they've probably gone from something that wasn't so interactive to our dashboard builder where they can click straight into contracts and edit them and then we've popped some favorite events up the top as well just to make that um, entry really nice slick and clean um, so they can pop up the top to their favorite events if they want to enter some new data or if they want to jump into an existing record they can use the dashboard builder on their front page to navigate yeah, the queen of keeping it simple i like it very well very well set out Mitch, was there anything else that you wanted to jump through on this on this dashboard or the workflow or anything you you, you wanted to bring up? No, I think we've we've covered we've covered most things. I just um, wanted to, I guess, 
make known that how how far we've we've kind of come with the system. We we started out using it um, at I guess a much lower level. We started to use it to to try and keep records of information, and and it was it was done I guess pretty successfully. Um, but the old dashboard was was nowhere near as interactive as this. So we've we've managed to. I guess coming onto Smarter Base, it, it streamlined our workflows in the first place, and then by by I guess improving the system in our last round of improvements and including these new dashboards, um, we've managed to really I guess up up the the ante with the the process and um, streamline things a lot more, and uh, we're we're really happy with with how it's working for us. And um, I guess this is now just sort of the start for us. We can now build from here and. Um, you know, more and more processes that we think we can streamline and automate. Um, we're going to push through here. That's that's great to hear, my friend. And we want to thank you again for joining and thank New South Wales Rugby League for giving us the opportunity to showcase this. Like I said, at the top of the call, we love to have our clients on and get them to talk us through some of their workflows. Uh, and it also saves us from nagging at people too much and, and losing our voice. So very refreshing, very lovely to hear another voice. And thank you again, Mitch. Thank you, New South Wales Rugby League. And thank you, Carolyn, for, for jumping on. That'll be, that'll be it for today's webinar. Thank you for joining. Next, uh, in a fortnight's time, we have a, a USA edition of our human performance webinar. Stay tuned for details. If you like this, please let us know in the comments below and please forward uh, any sort of suggestions that you may have of any future webinars that you want to see. For James, Carolyn and Mitchell, thank you very much for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Yeah, well, thanks, guys. Thanks.